Hello everybody, this is the Praetorian. Um, I'm here giving my first, or doing my first recording because uh, I figured it was time. I've been hearing a lot of people on YouTube talk and a lot of them are discussing conspiracy theory and, you know, how if it's not conspiracy theory they're trying to implicate people in a lot of crazy corrupt things that are going on and uh, they seem to have this idea that that this is all new um, I personally feel that this is the opposite I, I feel that a lot of people in today's world are actually waking up to things that have been taking place for a long long time and uh, I've actually been doing a lot of research on a lot of things that have been discussed here lately before any of this craziness started, before Donald Trump was voted into office or, you know, any of that, I was right here doing the actual research, and I wasn't doing it for anybody else, I was just doing it because I was curious. Um, the reason why I started doing it was because a while back, you know, um, I knew somebody who was uh, a patient uh, that had cancer and she went into remission and while she was uh, suffering from cancer she was on medical and she'd retired and she worked as a land a landlady in uh, Phoenix Arizona in downtown Phoenix Arizona renovated uh, an economy uh, apartment complex and literally got awards from the city of Phoenix for the work she had done. She moved to where I'm at now in southern Illinois. She's my sister's mother-in-law and uh, she was going through a lot of issues with with her health insurance or her medical insurance. And they uh, kept messing around with her, you know, putting her in what they referred to as a donut hole. And, a donut hole, if nobody's aware of it, is whenever they pay out a lot of money to a person that they can't really afford to pay them, they put them on hold. So that person has to wait six, nine months, sometimes a year before they can get any medical assistance. And they were doing this for to her, and she was a cancer patient. Well, she ended up passing away, but it wasn't from cancer. She ended up getting a cold and she was an older woman so she passed away from it and after that it just you know none of it really made sense to me you know things in the world just didn't make too much sense we're raised to believe one thing and, and the world tells us another so that's the reason why I started doing the research that I've been doing and um, I'm not going to tell you that it's a pleasant journey but it's actually been an eye-opener um, I've had to change my whole way of thinking about a lot of things so um, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna start making some uh, recordings and putting them out there and letting you guys listen to them and see what you think about them because it's time for me to start talking um, the first series that I'm gonna get started with is one that I've been working on for quite a while um, the the name of the story uh, story that I've been working on is actually um, called um, The Beginning of the New Age. And uh, the, the, parts, the, 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 the part that I've act I'm going to start talking about first is something that I call the system we know according to timeline. And, um, you know, like I said, a lot of people are talking about conspiracy theories. And they want to try to tell you that the new world order is is coming, and I'm sorry to tell you, but it's already here. It's been here for quite a while. All right, the system that we refer to as the system is the new world order. It started a long time ago, um, and we were stupid, or our grandparents were stupid, or whoever it was that was around was stupid and just didn't freaking pay attention thought it was a good deal and all the time they were taking away our rights I know that might sound offensive to some people but it's actually the truth um, the thing things I'm gonna bring up 
it's gonna mention, you know, things that, you know, other writers have mentioned, like, you know, I, I like to refer to Dean Henderson, you know, he wrote a really good blog, and, uh, he implicated, you know, the Rothschilds, and, uh, the Warburg family and their banks and everything and, and how they were uh, implicated into you know a cartel f with the Federal Reserve, the Kuhn Loeb and uh, company, things like that. You know, if uh, you haven't heard of the Warburgs or the Rothschilds or the Loeb family or Jacob Schiff, then this is probably something that you should listen to because it's very informative and it's very very true these people if you have they, they've literally they literally walked into our, our country and took everything and put it in their pockets um, back in 2007 2008 when we had our disaster and everybody heard about Lehman Brothers that was Kuhn, Loeb, and Company, all right? Kuhn, Loeb, and Company actually merged with the Lehman Brothers because they went under, so they merged. And Kuhn, Loeb, or, and Lehman Brothers ended up eventually going under too. And that was in 2008. Dean Henderson wrote a compelling blog implicating the Rothschild and the Warburg family's involvement in a Federal Reserve cartel while pointing out eight families altogether, naming Rothschild of London, Rothschild Bank of Berlin, Warburg Bank of Hamburg, Warburg Bank of Amsterdam, and Kuhn Loeb Bank of New York as a few of the banks involved in the monopoly. I could easily mention uh, shady transactions over oil while writing about the Rothschild family. To properly introduce my story though, I will identify people from different time periods. Presentation without dramatization and flair will show a timeline and illustration of today's establishment. Changes in economics and energy transformation People are delusional if they believe our single most problem is oil. A laborer's job was made easier through industrialization and progress, but created profound social expansions. Traditional agri agrarian societies in rural areas uh, were evolving into secular and urban societies. Industrialized evolution in undomesticated and uncultured societies remained a mystery. Britain, Europe, and the United States, though, show what happened and is known. Mechanization of labor and its inanimate energy sources. Okay, now with that, what I wanted to discuss there is the fact that Okay, you, you take a look at the, the industrialized, uh, the industrialization, you know, of uh, uh, countries that were our third worlds or that are out in the Middle East, p countries that were, you know, in Africa, people that most of them didn't even know what reading was, most of them had no idea about what factories were, or building vehicles, or were bu building anything, you know. They were lucky enough to know how to build wells. These people are third world countries, and these big corporations just moved in on top of them, and they started to push this new industry onto them, started making them more domesticated, um, forcing them to learn how to read, telling them that they needed to do the things that our countries did, like abortion. Um, I found out that the United Nations now makes it a regulation that if a country wants to become a part of the United Nations, they have to endorse 
abortion laws. Um, you're telling countries that are in Africa that still live within tribes and a lot of them who still worship, you know, black magic and pagan religions and, you know, if they do practice Christian religions, it's mingled in with a lot of their old traditional pagan religions. You're asking these people to accept aborting their babies as a law that allows people to do that, you know. Um, then you have to understand, too, that there's a lot of issues that are going on in countries like this that we actually caused by us moving into their areas and and advancing their their agrarian societies as it's referred to you know these were rural areas and they they, they, they began to evolve you know into secular and urban societies um, you can use a lot of countries for example you know um, look at India look at the the percentage of rapes that have actually gone up since India started becoming more liberal and they've become more you know uh, domesticated you know more industrialized it's really sad that you know that, that that's happened um, I've actually read articles where they talk about the ghettos in India and they describe shacks literally built with power lines just hanging over the top of the ceilings for electricity and people have to walk through water with these power lines over the top of them in order to get from point A to point B so uh, that part right there I, I wrote about and I wanted to make a comment on because it's very important the literacy uh, rates declined from four 44% in 1950 to 20% in the year 2000, according to UNESCO. The number of illiterate population worldwide, though, increased from 700 million in 1950 to 860 million by the year 2000. Rapid population growth and poor education of undeveloped countries were the cause. So, see, that's the reason why I say don't listen to statistics, don't listen to polls, don't listen to percentages, because the percentages, according to this, 40, okay, illiterate, illiterate rates declined from 40% in 1950 to 20% in the year 2000. Okay, the only reason why it dropped halfway is because the population grew. <laughs> okay, the population grew and the amount of Ill people who are illiterate grew with it. Okay, so you have it dropping down to 20%, but according to UNESCO, UNESCO the number of illiterates population worldwide increased from 700 million to 19. Uh, in 1950 to 860 million.